Well, howdy diddly dandy there. Chums, as I, Captain of the Steves. Now today, Chums, I want to talk about something a little bit different. Now, I know that I say that I don't want to bring anything political to my actual channel, but because of the climate, and because it is the day that everybody goes out to vote in the US, and I'm over in the UK, and I'm not really part of that, I just wanted to chime in and just sort of give my take on however the way the election goes. Okay, so you've got two candidates, two candidates that I feel are very good representation of the US. There's different polls, there's different sections, there's different sort of divides with inside of you know, political swathes. You've got President Trump on the right and you've got Kamala on the left. Now, before this whole pandemic type stuff kicked off, I really didn't understand what left or right was. Just to give you an idea of where I stand on everything, I really do feel that we need to protect our oceans. You know, coral death is a thing, it's happening. Overfishing is happening. So yeah, I definitely want to protect our oceans. That's something that I would like to strive towards. I also feel that resource management is a must. You know, precious resource, especially since we need to get those precious resources to make alternatives to different sorts of fuel and energies. So I believe that, you know, resource management is something that we should be looking at and caring about, you know? So there's that too. I also feel that privacy matters. I also feel that a social credit system is a bad thing. I think that a universal basic income is only a good thing once AI is in place, robots are in place, and a lot of jobs are being taken. We need to be able to hold people up in some way, shape or form, but I don't think a universal basic income tied to a social credit system or a digital wallet is a good thing because it could lead to control over that digital currency. You might get given so many credits towards having some meat and it might become a treat rather than a thing that you want to eat regularly. I think we should be able to choose what we put inside our bodies and all that sort of stuff. I also believe in free speech. Now I know that Kamala on the left hand side would like to shut down or impose infractions on Twitter. But I feel that people should be able to say what they want to say, even if it's a stupid thing to say. You know, there might be ramifications for saying something bad. But, you know, it shouldn't put you in a prison cell like it's happening over in the UK. So you can see here, I'm very much in the middle. I've got very central ideas. I mean, I would love to get to the point where we're in a Star Trek type world where we can replicate resources using nanotechnology, using replicators or some sort of 3D printer that prints using some sort of DNA and actually puts things together using building blocks. You know, so all of this sort of stuff, I feel, could be in the future, the future of Star Trek in a roundabout way. And that's a federation of planets. You've seen how diverse the crew of the freaking Starship Enterprise is and everybody gets along just fine. There is no left and right divides either in a Star Trek type universe. So all this political stuff, I hope, goes out the window. All the stuff to do with currency goes out of the window. When we get to a stage that we're resource abundant and we, we don't have to fight over resources, greed gets abolished and the need for currency gets abolished. If we can get to that stage, fine. My worry is though, is you've got the World Economic Forum that are the puppet masters right now trying to put their idea of a global reset into place. And that is a little bit worrying because they want to tie it to a social credit system. They're always praising China on how good their social credit system is. If you don't know about China's social credit system, it's super scary. Here's a little clip. China is creating a social credit system. It's a plan to regulate business and citizen behavior with various incentive schemes. China's State Council unveiled the plan in 2014, saying it would allow the trustworthy to roll everyone under heaven, while making it hard for the discredited to take a single step. China's leaders say the system has several main targets, honesty in government affairs, integrity in commerce and wider society, and boosting judicial credibility. About three dozen cities around China are testing their own versions of social credit schemes. Currently, the backbone of the system is a set of black lists. Serious offenders of existing laws are identified by regulatory and oversight bodies. Social credit scores, used in some pilot cities, 
I want to remove points based on behavior. Social credit data can come from court judgments, government agency records, citizen observers who monitor neighbors, or from corporate records. In at least one part of the city, social credit scores can be damaged by defaulting on loan or tax payments. Selling faulty products or breaking traffic laws can also cost points. In those communities, good social credit makes it easier to get bank loans at lower rates. Other perks include free health checks or discounts on heating and free water. Bad social credit may limit access to tickets for high-speed trains or air travel. A Supreme Court blacklist is already in use, limiting travel for people who fail to comply with rulings. By late 2018, the list had stopped sales of 5.4 million high-speed train tickets and about 17 million airline tickets. China's social credit system is due to go nationwide by the year 2020. Okay, now that appears to be sort of like Black Mirror times 10. Now, for myself, no matter who gets into office, I mean, if Kamala gets into office, now we know that the World Economic Forum has had steer over the current political persuasion. It could be that it gets ushered in under Kamala. Uh, it's a chance. There's a chance it might happen. But then also under Trump, there is a chance that it may happen because Trump is pushing for some sort of voter ID even now. He might want to have that as a digital passport on a device and then that opens up the door for this to happen in the future. It might not happen as quick, but it could happen. So either way, I see both of these presidents as gateways for a social credit system and a form of control to some degree. It just depends how it's done. But yeah, now I'm recording this before the vote happens, before we know the results. And I just want to put it out there that no matter who gets into office, I think we're going to be in for a very bumpy four years. Um, I've got concerns on both sides of the spectrum. I do not have a preferred choice of who gets in. The only things that I would say that are a plus from each of the candidates is at the moment you've got Donald Trump saying that he wants to shut down these wars. He wants to stop wars from happening. Now, I'm all anti-death. You know, I don't care who's being blown up. It's still a human that's being blown up. Okay, Whether that's Russian, Ukrainian, whether it's somebody in Gaza, whether it's somebody in Israel, it's still a death that shouldn't happen. Human life is really precious okay and the people are just being reduced to numbers at the moment and it it really upsets me to be fair thinking about these wars that are going on and there is nothing nothing at all that i can do to prevent it myself and the only people that can are you know the world powers now donald trump has already sort of suggested that day one in office he's going to try and stop these wars and put an end to them and last time he was in office, he did negotiate different things, moved embassies around and stuff like that. And he made waves in keeping stabilization. I'm not going to say that he's going to be able to do this. And my worry is if he can't stop these wars because they're too far along now, what's he going to do then? You know, because he's probably going to try and stop these wars by making threats. If you don't stop what you're doing, I've got this big shiny red button. He can only say that so many times before it becomes an empty threat. So my worry is he might have to press that button. And then we've got nuclear frickin' war or we've got something close to. That worries me. That worries the heck out of me. But at the same time, he's the only candidate that's saying, I'm going to try and stop these wars. So there we go. Kamala. What I like about Kamala is she's all for trying to help the less fortunate people inside the US. She wants to improve Obamacare. I don't know whether it's called that anymore. It's some sort of health bill or health act or whatever. Whatever it's called, she wants to increase that. She wants to make it so if you haven't got money in your pocket, you can still get health care and not die because you can't afford it. That is freaking awesome. So, you know, she's got a great policy there. She's trying to help the less fortunate. Brilliant. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff around migration. Now, I believe that migration can be very good for a country, especially in countries where population growth isn't as high. 
uh, or where skills are sparse and we've got skills gaps. I honestly think that a point system needs to be introduced not only in the US but here in the UK. We need to get skilled workers in the actual areas that we need those workers. We don't need an abundance of people that can wash cars or something like that. You know, we need skilled workers in skilled professions to help our economies grow. And yes, all the, all the countries where we've had a hand in their destruction, like say Syria or Iraq or wherever, or even when we gave Hong Kong back to China, I still think we should be taking on people seeking asylum, genuine cases of asylum. We've had a hand in those countries, downfall, upheaval, upset, whatever, unraveling. We need to help them out. You know, all those disposed people from Ukraine right now, bring them over here, fine. You know, they are generating cases of asylum. But what we need to also do is close down loopholes and gaps inside of, say, walls or the sea over here in the UK. We've got people coming over in, in boats. We don't know who they are. And we see things happening on our streets that we don't really want happening on our streets because some of these people might have mental health issues, cultural indifference, or they might feel that they've been wronged by our country, persecuted in some way, and they've come here deliberately to cause acts of violence. I mean, if you ask people on the streets of America, would you like to go and visit London right now? And how safe would you feel at night? They're probably saying, well, I've heard quite a lot. There's quite a lot of stabbings going on there. Or there's quite a lot of mobile phone fests from people on freaking electric scooters. Yeah, that's a thing. But there's also states in America where you've now got people that look like zombies in the street through drug overdoses or whatever. Or you've got shops just closed in swathes in some cities because they're allowed to loot stuff up to a thousand dollars before the police are called in. That's crazy, you know, and uh, those shops closing left, right and centre. And that's not good for your economy, is it? <laughs> so, you know. I think a lot of people are going to be voting based on their economic problems as well. You know, their social situation that they're in right now. You go to the shop, a shop that would have cost you maybe, what, $200 for your weekly groceries is now costing you for like a family of five or something is now costing you near on double that. You're probably paying $400. It's almost how? How do you survive right now? Inflation is freaking crazy okay and that's mainly because a lot of farms are being sort of shut down closed down we're not being able to produce our own foods and things like that and it seems to have got worse over the last like four to eight years well when you look at who's been in office for that period of time and what they did to try and help prevent that it doesn't feel like they have it feels like they've escalated that so some people might vote based off of that everybody's got their reasons for voting who they vote for if somebody votes for Trump, it's not so much because they like Trump. It could be that they just don't like the current situation. Or if somebody votes for Kamala, it's not overly that they might like Kamala. They might like the ideas and principles and agendas that she stands for or what she's trying to protect. So it, it's difficult. I mean, people keep throwing around labels. If you vote for Trump, then you're a, a Nazi or you're a, a fascist or you're a, a racist or you're very horrible terms linked to people that want to vote for Trump. But a lot of the people that are voting for Trump are voting for Trump out of frustration, out of the fact that they can't now buy the things that they used to be able to buy before. They can't put food on the table without taking something else away, like not paying for heating or getting rid of the internet or streaming services. People just don't have any free money anymore to enjoy themselves and don't have a life. It's like they're just working to survive. And then you've got over people that might fight vote for Kamala because they like the way their state currently is and they, they're happy with the, the current norms that they've got or they want the lift in their, you know, their health systems and being able to pay for things through the care packages that I was mentioning earlier. So people have got their reasons to vote the way that they wish to vote. So. You, I would I would love to see people stop in attacking people for who they want to vote for. We're all human. We're all people. And I'd imagine a lot of people are quite centralist like me. You, you, you like things from both. You, you, you're proud of America. You, America's an amazing, great country any, anyway. You know, make America great again. It's already great. <laughs> but yeah, you've also got, you know, people that 
are really hard up at the moment and they don't know which way to turn. And then you've got people on the right that sort of label those that are on the left as wokies or, or crazy people or whatever. Where, well, the people on the left think the people on the right are crazy and the people on the right and the people think on the left are crazy. Everybody's just throwing insults at each other. When really what I would love to see is the left and right come together and actually say, hold on, it's the system that's doing this. It the, 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 the cause of the divide is the media. It's it's these political sorts of camps that are sort of if you what I, I watch both sides. I watch Fox and I watch CNN and I watch them sort of back to back to see how they um, you know, report on things in both of them have got factual elements in. OK, they're they're called axioms. So you take those and go, well, well that's the, that's the actual news. They're both agreeing on those things. That's the truth. And then you see all the political spin and all the drama and all the sorts of things that they're spewing out that are falsehoods. And there's falsehoods on both sides, massive falsehoods on both sides. And you can clearly see them when you look for the axioms, the commonalities between both news channels, then you see the truth. And what we're actually seeing as truth is footnotes, freaking footnotes. And the rest of it is political spin and brainwashing cack. OK, I mean, a lot of people that watch CNN would go, how can you watch Fox? It's brainwashing nonsense. And then the people over on the Fox camp say, how can you watch CNN? It's brainwashing nonsense. You're both right. OK, both just spend a day, watch your own news feed, then watch the opposition news feed and look for the commonalities. Look for the consistencies and there's your truth. And it is, like I say, it's a freaking footnote. It's insane. And the rest is just political spin. Anything that one side isn't saying, political spin. And if you want to confirm what the political spin is, watch a different news angle from another country like go on to why on you know like the india news today channel okay and it's reporting and you would get the footnotes and then they'd actually say and this is what the left is saying this is what the right is saying and none of it's true <laughs> okay so that can actually help you out massively just watching another country's take on your country okay it, it gives you a heck of a lot of insight there's other news feeds available or there used to be but a lot have been shut down now because they've got political sway too so there is that now what i would say is whoever gets into office whoever gets into office is going to need a hundred percent of america's support okay to stay in office and to make the difference whatever they're saying in their manifestos their policies what they want to bring to office in turn they've only got four years to do it and the state of America right now and the state of the world stage, can it be fixed in four years? Not all of it, not all of it. So they're going to need all of your support and backing. It doesn't matter who gets in. If say Kamala gets in and then she's being thrown litigation and trying to be impeached and all sorts by the opposition or having the vote questioned by the opposition, she's not gonna get a fair run at it. She's not gonna to get to do what she wishes to do in those four years because she's gonna be bogged down by red tape. Same if Trump gets into office. We saw it the last time he was in office. We've got the Russia Gate scandal. We got all other bits thrown at him. He didn't get a fair shot at office either, but he's still got the freaking wall built, which is one of his promises. It's very rare that you see somebody you know, say that they're going to do something and then it actually happens by the end of their four year term. At least he got some stuff done that he promised in his manifesto last time. And that gives me a little bit of hope if he does get into office this time, some of the things he's promised might actually happen. He might stop some of this killing. He might start so stop some of the wars. Just hope he does it in a way that doesn't result in a big red button being pressed and even more dev. But yeah, we've got that. But then I've also I've said this about you know, the big red button press. But what if Kamala gets into office? You know, what happens then? What if she does exactly what Biden's done and disappears and goes and sleeps somewhere or something? We, we hardly see him. The only time we see Biden come out of his coffin like a freaking vampire is when he's sniffing children. He's freaking sinister. OK, but hopefully Kamala's not going to be like that. <laughs> I mean, Hopefully she's going to come out and she's going to stand up to these arseholes. When I say arseholes, I'm about, you know, that are threatening to do all sorts. We've got, you know, President Putin and Ukraine. 
we've got China, Xi Jinping, and we've got Kim Jong-un over in North Korea. Okay, get those four people and put them in a room. Here you go, I'll, I'll do a visual graphic, okay? So here you go, I'll put a visual graphic up on screen. Okay, so you've got all these four people on screen right now. And then you want to put Kamala Harris in that same group of people. Okay, these got these four people are complete monsters. She isn't. She she's quite a normie in comparison. Is she going to be able to stand her ground against tyrants like that? Are they going to feel threatened by her? Are they going to listen? Yeah, you know, it's like it's like having a shark tank. Okay, you got four giant sharks in there a couple of hammerheads or a tiger shark or something and then you put kamala harris in and she's like an ill-tempered sea bass with a freaking laser on her head okay now a lot of those sharks you can go hold on she's quite ill-tempered she's got a freaking laser on her head i'm not going near her one of you go bite her first you know you keep her distracted and i'm gonna go bite her from the rear yeah <laughs> and that could quite easily happen Outside of that analogy, outside of that sort of thing, you know, they've got four versus one at the end of the day. They've all got very much the same agenda. They've got pacts with each other. It's not just one of those sharks she's got to fight. She's taking on all freaking four. Will she stand a chance is, is my worry. And without 100% of the Americans backing and the power that the Americans have, if we're all still bickering and fighting amongst each other left versus right oh my president didn't win if we don't 100 percent back it they're going to see weakness even more she's not going to last all that long on that world stage with tyrants like that okay same situation four characters on the screen boom, 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 boom. there they are you put donald trump in that shark tank okay so you've got your hammerheads you've got your tiger sharks but freaking trump is a bloody great white isn't he you know they're going to be like, right, if we all gang up, we might stand a freaking chance. But I'm not going first. <laughs> Sod that. I'm not, I'm not I'm going to nibble first. He's freaking nuts. He got shot at and he just fist pumped the air. I don't think I'm that freaking ballsy. I think they're going to be a lot more hesitant around Trump. You know, they've got to go at him, hammer and tongs. They've got to proper form some sort of union. But even they've got slight bickering amongst themselves. They all want to be king of the shark tank. I don't think they'll make a move. You know, so... But I still think Trump needs 100% of America's support. And I think he needs a good term in office to do anything to try and stop these other four freaking powerhouses, these tyrants. He's going to have his work cut out for him. And if he hasn't got 100% of your backing, he's not going to win either. Okay, so either way, however this election goes, the president that gets in office right now, I do not envy them one bit because they've got their work cut out for them. So please, America and the world stage, pull yourselves together because at the moment, I think the West is teetering on the edge of being pulled into forever wars by one of these tyrant states. They're building their own sort of pact together. It's called BRICS. Look into BRICS. Yeah, I'll put the spelling up on screen. But each of those letters represent a different nation or country within inside of the BRICS sort of consortium. They want to build their own currency. They want to have a different system other than SWIFT. So whenever their sanctions are put on them, they can still trade in the background and they don't get affected by any of these sanctions anymore. They're going to have free reign. And a lot of the countries that have joined BRICS now, BRICS Plus, are huge. When it comes to actual population headcount, it's bigger than those now that are not in BRICS. Okay, you need to be aware of BRICS because that's happening and it's happening rather rapidly. They had their meeting in October. They actually introduced a BRICS sort of payment card, like a, a social credit card in a roundabout way. And it might be backed by a whole new currency in time that moves them away from the petrodollar. And Saudi Arabia has actually moved away from backing the dollar, which makes it no longer a petrodollar. So you've got that as well, people. The, the powers that align and the economy at the moment, as fragile as it is, is super fragile because of BRICS as well. Now, I've done a whole video on BRICS. If you want to go check that out, I put a link over there. You can go and watch that because that has massive ramifications for the world stage. 
But what I'm trying to put out to you is right now, depending on how the vote went, you might be feeling a little bit upset. You might be feeling a bit down. You might be like, oh, my president get, didn't get in. We've been robbed or whatever. Either way, there's going to be a lot of that. There's going to be a lot of fallout. And I really hope that it doesn't stretch out to the streets. I hope we don't see any civil unrest because that can lead to even more control. That could lead to martial law. And either of these electees are quite more than capable of doing that or using the army to enforce things and take away rights and privileges. You know, at the end of the day, people have voted because they're in a desperate sort of situation and they've voted for a reason that makes sense to them personally. It's not worth attacking people over on what their core beliefs are. You can't change someone's core beliefs until they've lived through something. So whoever they vote for and whichever president gets in, they're going to make mistakes as well. You know, they're only human. We're all only human. But I just want to make, a, I just want to sort of say to you all that, you know, it's four years in office, four years in office. And out of it, there's been a lot of lessons learned and there's going to be a lot of lessons learned over these next four years. Even if it is a very bumpy ride, even if it's a very rocky ride, at the end of it, we're going to see maybe hopefully a brighter future through lessons learned. There's going to be mistakes made and you can only learn from those mistakes. Which president's going to make the most mistakes? I think they can equally make mistakes, <laughs> okay? And hopefully by the end of the four years, if your electee didn't get in, there's always the next four years. Yeah. And hopefully there'll be somebody that you can vote for, get behind and root for that's going to make those changes that you want then. And if you didn't go out and vote and the person that you wanted didn't get in, then you know, you've only got yourself to blame. Get yourself ready to vote next time and make your vote and make it count. But anyway, people, that's everything that I've got for you. I don't want to come across as sounding preachy or overbearing. That's not the aim of this video. This video is I'm hoping to try and uplift those that didn't get the result that they wanted to try and see and be more empathetic to the opposite side. OK, because that's key. Empathy is key. You've got to try and think, well, why have people voted this person in? And it, it could be for reasons that are very much core to belief systems, right? Or it could be core to you know, the fact that they're pushed into a corner and they're finding it hard to make ends meet. And it's just sheer desperation for change. So there we go, people. I'll leave it to you. But at the end of the day, a vote is a vote. Democracy is what we are trying to protect here. Okay, democracy lets us have the vote. A lot of these other countries, a lot of those tyrants you saw on screen, they don't have votes in their syst in their system that are fair or equal or right. It's you know, at least we've got the dem democratic system and that needs to be protected. So whoever wins your presidency, try your best to get behind whatever they're doing policy wise so they can deliver in their vision. Because at the end of the day, either of their visions are not bad visions. Until next time. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.